Emerson swings and pops this one up. Carter Warlick gives it some chase momentarily, but watches it fall out of play, and the count will remain three balls and two strikes. Baseball, with no over-exaggeration, a game of timing, and uh, Chris Baker felt like he needed to come out and have a meeting with his senior pitcher and did. Since then, Tyler's thrown three strikes. Make that four strikes and a big swinging K for the Pirates as Grady Emerson will go down on strikes for out number one. That will bring Micah Roberts to the plate. Roberts, the third baseman for the Eagles, is the one that technically started that big fourth inning yesterday, five runs. He reached base on an error. And uh, what the Pirates could need now more than anything would be one of those amazing double play balls that they've used to get out of innings this season. This one pops in front. Connor Sanderson doing a great job to square it up and keep it in front of him so that the runners cannot advance. Great play there by the senior catcher. We talk about seniors, and they're all over the diamond for the Pirates. And that kind of experience and the experience that they've gotten over this season is vital in a game three. The 1-0 pitch on the way here for Roberts. Hit high in the air. Warlick's going to have to charge it and it's fire it across, ball. and they're going to call it a foul ball, which I think will be a good thing for the Pirates is that ball, as it was chopped in the box, hung up in the air for what seemed like I won't say decades. That would be an over-exaggeration, but at least a couple of months. It was trouble. Warlick doing a great job of fielding it and firing it across to get the sure out at first. We'll reset everything. Rockmore will be at second base. Davis over at first. Micah Roberts, cleanup batter for the Eagles at the plate. The 1-1 pitch. Low and away for ball two. And the count moves now to two balls and one strike. And, Coach, it's, it's, it's pretty humid down here today. The air is pretty heavy, so it's going to be important that Tyler does what he can to stay ahead in the count. Two balls, one strike. The count here for Roberts. He'll pop this one up high in the sky. It'll be an infield fly rule. Gus Cook is going to take it there. Timothy Haynes getting away from it. And a... a one of the things that we saw right there, Mr. Inlow, that the Pirates struggled with yesterday was that communication. And you see the sophomore coming in from second base, having a better chance at that ball with a mitt really made more for catching pop flies than that first baseman's mitt. And Timothy Haynes getting away from it. Now two outs here uh, for the Pirates in the top of the first inning. If you're not familiar with this series thus far, Pirates winning game one, Argyle winning game two. Tyler Spruill starting game three here. Struggling early, but coming around since that mound visit with Coach Chris Baker. Throws his first strike of the day as he faces the fifth batter for the Eagles and Alex D'Angelo. D'Angelo singled for the Eagles yesterday to get a little series going. Spruill steps off, and we have a miss here. That is not going to be a good play there. Will Reed's going to have to try to track down the ball. Runner will stop at third base, and the Eagles have a run scored on an ill-advised throw. Warlick could not get glove to it. Spruill stepped off in time, and uh, unfortunately another error will cost the Pirates an early run, and that's what we saw yesterday as well was a, a, a throw that got awry that was able to get Argyle a run scored. No balls, one strike. The count here for D'Angelo. This one popped up out into right field. Cutter Douglas is going to have a chance at it. Peepcorn calls him off and will haul it in. And that's how the inning will end. The Eagles able to score one run on one hit after one error. They leave one on base. It's 1-0 to zero headed into the bottom of the first right here from the regional final on 100.7 The Score and the LCISD Athletics YouTube channel.
YouTube channel from Crutcher Field here in Abilene, Texas, and it will be Tyler Spruill leading things off as he's done since district play started. And we say this a lot, Mr. Inlow, and I love saying it, but as Tyler Spruill goes, so do the Pirates at times. This offense a bit anemic yesterday as they were able to score two runs in the first inning, but really held out the rest of the game, the remainder of the game, not getting any runner past second base after the first inning. They'll have to correct that today, especially at this point as they trail 1-0 to zero, if they're going to be successful. Yes, they will. Tyler needs to start us off, maybe help himself out right here. Just There's, there's no, no relaxing in this game. And again, Argyle has another lefty on the mound today. So, and I, I believe we've seen, we, I know it was all lefties yesterday. And they just, they just have a, a huge bullpen full of lefties. Beautiful shot by Tyler. Reed Ross on the mound for the Eagles, and Sproul hits it the other direction. Tried to have a play from the right fielder. Argyle definitely had the shift on in the scouting report down there. As Sproul went the same direction yesterday to start things off for the Pirates, he'll be on with an infield single, which is a good sign of things to come. Cohen Peepcorn batting second today was 0 for 3 yesterday. We'll see what he can do here. You see the third baseman for the Eagles already starting to charge in. Peepcorn lays it down straight down the middle. The pitcher will try to play it there. Ross fires the first. It's going to get away. Sproul's going to get to third. Looking for the sign from Coach Winchie, and he says stop right there. And Cohen Peepcorn doing what Cohen Peepcorn does, laying down a nice bunt and speeding down to first base. And you see the Eagles kind of getting a dose of their own medicine there with the error in one of the best bats in the state of Texas coming to the plate in Timothy Haynes. And I don't say that lightly, Mr. Inlow. And you know as well as I do, we are guys who speak the truth. Most of the time. Most of the time is right. But we always try. And again, Coach, just like we've said over and over, it's just doing the small things. Now we've got two runners in scoring positions with Tyler up. Looking pretty good for the, for the Pirates at this point. And Tyler had mentioned yesterday to Randy Rosetta that, that in that inning where the wheels sort of fell off that, that, that they relaxed, and, and there will be no relaxing today. Every play, every pitch. Sproul at third base, Pete Corn at second, Haynes at the plate. The 1 1 pitch from Reed Ross from the windup, outside and away for ball two to push the count ahead for Timothy Haynes at two balls and one strike. Haynes won for three yesterday, singled in his first at bat, which eventually led to some pirate led to a pirate run. Stands in now facing Reed Ross for the first time. He peeks over at Spruill, comes to the plate, and low. This one gets away from Sandifer, but not enough to advance any runners. And the count moves to 3-1. and one. And this is, like they say, a hitter's count for Timothy Haynes. Timothy needs to show discipline at the plate right here. Make that pitcher throw as many pitches as we possibly can. The 3-1 pitch fouled off over down the right netting. And again, we just need our batters to show discipline, not only in the field, but especially at the plate. The 3-2 pitch, low and hit out front, and the Pirates have now loaded them up. And Cutter Douglas coming to the plate, and it was Douglas's single yesterday that got the Pirates scoring off to, to a good start. And we'll see what the senior right fielder can do here. Cutter yesterday, one for two for the Pirates. Singled in his first at bat. Hopefully Annie Jay's listening again today. It was her shout-out that led to the big single for the senior yesterday. Maybe a little bit more good luck here 
for her nephew, probably her favorite nephew if I were guessing. Oh, I can't imagine anyone else not being the favorite. Cutter is a great kid. This one low and inside to start off to Cutter Douglas for ball number one. Reed Ross pitching today for the Eagles. If you're joining us now, the score currently 1-0 on a pickoff error by the Pirates. And since the bottom of the first started, all three batters have gotten on base for the Pirates. Cutter Douglas pops this one up and out of play. Foul for strike number one. Cutter loves to attack those pitches once he gets after the first one. We've seen him go after the first one some at times, but he's showing just a little bit more patience over the last couple of weeks, which is proving to be very, very positive for him. Douglas singles out into center field. Sproul will score. Pete Korn comes around in the stop sign from Coach Winchy. will stop him there. That was so well played by Cutter. And again, just doing the just the small things, the fundamental things, keep the bases loaded, tie the score. And we've got Carter coming up to the plate. Carter has been seeing the ball very well in the past few playoff series. We need him here. Bases loaded once again for the Pirates. Peep Corn at third base, Haynes at second, Douglas at first. All tied up now at one apiece here in the bottom of the first inning, game three of this regional final. Warlick hits this one his way, down the line, third base. Peep Corn will score. Haynes coming around third, he will score. Douglas will get the stop sign from Coach Winchie, tripping over the bag and have to dive back. But that will go down as a two RBI double for Carter Warlick. And you see the coach for the Eagles coming out to have a meeting with his pitcher. And this is exciting, big momentum plays for the Pirates. But it's no different than what we saw yesterday. And to use a race car term, all gas, no brakes. Absolutely, coach. And Carter just, just laced a rocket into the hot corner. And he almost cleaned him off. Coach Wincy wisely put the stop sign on for Cutter. And it's very important, folks, if you're watching or listening, if you can hear the crowd. The Pirate crowd is really into the game, and they weren't yesterday. We, and, we, and, and granted, we didn't give them a lot of reason to get into this game. But this is such a momentum game. Game three is always a momentum game. It's momentum and do the small things right. The team that does that is usually going to come out on top. Josiah Gonzalez at the plate now for the Pirates, and the scoreboard has reset a bit. One ball, no strikes, the count here. The score, 3-1 to one after that big double from Carter Warlick. Josiah yesterday, 2-3 for three for the Pirates. Fouls this one off toward the first base dugout and foul, and it appears that former Pirate A.J. Perez pops out of the dugout to field that one. A.J. Perez, a... Uh, Oh, not unfamiliar with some of these big baseball games. A.J. still has some skills. I think he can still get it done. The 1-1 pitch here for Josiah Gonzalez. Ross from the windup comes set. And big swing and a miss here from Gonzalez. And fans, not only at, at Crutcher Scott, but fans that, that are watching that may see the scoreboard, it looks like they're, they're in the process of resetting the scoreboard. We've had a few technology issues today, so just bear with us. Everybody, everybody's keyed up for this game. None that we are really responsible for. Big swing and a miss here from Gonzalez, and that'll be strikeout number one for him and out number one. Now batting for the Pirates, the catcher, number 11, Connor Sanderson. 
Sanderson steps in for the Pirates, going 0 for 3 yesterday. He is due for a hit, Mr. Inlow, and you know at any point here, Connor Sanderson is ready to explode. Got quick hands through the zone. We saw that in the Abilene High Series with that big home run over left field, and we saw it last week with some clutch batting as well. Connor has not only been doing a great job behind, behind the plate, but he has been very, very disciplined at the plate. This one outside is going to be called for a strike. That one pretty far outside. The score still not correct out there. Maybe they'll be able to fix it uh, in between innings. It is three to one if you're just now joining us. Tyler Spruill singled to start the game. Correct that. Excuse me. It's four to one. It's just three to one here. Connor with the attempted bunt for a strike. No balls, two strikes here. The count for Sanderson. Douglas on third base, Warlick over at second base. The infield for the Eagles is in. Just a slight little Texas leaguer would certainly score Douglas and give Warlick a chance. Ross peeks over at Douglas, the pitch. Fouled off over toward the right side. The count will remain now. No balls and two strikes. The 0-2 pitch. Hung up in the sky. It's going to be up in the air for the senior shortstop. Excuse me, J.C. Davis able to run and track that down. It's going to go down as a fly out to, sec to the shortstop for out number two. And Bryce LeBlanc in the designated hitter role will step up to the plate now. We need Bryce to show the discipline he has been showing at the plate. It'd really be nice to, to be able to get at least one of these runs home with, with two outs. Bryce in that designated hitter role once again. Does a phenomenal job lefty on lefty. We'll see if he can get things going here today. Watches this one high for ball number one. His dad Larry listening and watching on our YouTube channel. Mindy Kitten and her family also listening on a college tour, it would appear. Three to one is your score currently. Pirates on top and a big swing and a miss here from LeBlanc. And it looks like every time Bryce swings, he's trying to make amazing contact. And when you've got a frame like that at 6'8", it's like Aaron Judge swinging a baseball bat. Bryce not near as big as Judge, but also batting from the left side. The 1-1 pitch on the way here from Ross. Fouled off over toward the left side for strike number one. The Pirates getting on top here in the bottom of the first inning, scoring three off of a single from Cutter Douglas and a big double from Carter Warlick. It is now Douglas at third base and Warlick at second base. The one-two pitch for LeBlanc is high to even up the count at two balls and two strikes with two outs. bump a bum Deuces are wild. Copyright Colt Rogers 2023. A big two-two pitch here for Reed Ross, pitcher for the Eagles. LeBlanc stands in, ready for the offering. This one Outside and away for ball three to fill up the count at three balls and two strikes. Here with two outs with nobody on first base. The runner's probably not moving on the pitch. LeBlanc steps in. Wants time and wisely does. And a good job there by Bryce LeBlanc calling time, resetting that internal clock. A big pirate contingency making their way down I-20 today, Mr. Inlow, and it is fun to see with the Argyle fans as well. The 3-2 pitch 
fouled off once again over toward first base where Grady Emerson will play it foul and everybody will go back where they just came from, the 3-2 pitch. The after, Lubbock- after what happened Thursday night with all the, the travel issues we had with, with all the flooding, it is it is very nice to see the Pirate fans here today. And I know, I'm, I'm certain, I, I, again, I hate to, to keep riding a dead horse, but I see these kids in class. They're great kids, and they know when their fans are here. They, they can hear them. I mean, they're focused on the game, but, but they know when their fans are here. The LCP coaches getting ready for the ASCO All-Star game. The team is watching a movie right now, but the coaches are watching their Pirates. That game, 7 o'clock at Pirate Stadium. If you've got chance to head out there, several Pirates playing in that game and the Pirates staff coaching the red team. Back here to baseball, the full count after that mound visit. Ross comes set, fires, and leaves that hanging up, and Bryce LeBlanc works his way back into the count to walk the bases loaded, and that's going to bring Gus Cook to the plate. The sophomore second baseman was 0 for 3 yesterday. We know in big, mo- in big moments, Gus does what he has to do. Gus has come up big for us in several situations. And again, we just we just need these kids to show discipline at the plate, do the small things right. This one first high and outside for ball number one. Gus just has to relax a little bit at the plate. We know and we've seen him get a hold of pitches several times this year. This one catches the outside corner for strike number one to even up the count at one ball and one strikes. Want to say hello to Garrett Hobbs and my favorite pig, Boar. Also, Cole Riojas, former pitcher for this Pirate team, listening back at home. Friends with uh, my, my son, so appreciate those guys tuning in. Cook fouls this one off over toward the right side and out of play for strike number two. He'll fall behind in the count just a bit here. One ball and two strikes. Brother Jude, Sister Mary Catherine, both former Pirate and Lady Pirate, respectively. Jude at baseball at Angelo State now. Gus Cook here settled in for the 1-2 pitch. Pops this one up over toward the shortstop. He's going to be able to get to it and haul it in and does there, and it will go down as out number three. The Pirates able to strike early here. Three runs on three hits, one error. They leave three on, but they'll take a 3-1 lead into the second when we come back from the regional final right here. Game three on 100.7 The Score and the LCISD Athletics YouTube channel. Three of the regional finals, 5 8 baseball between the Argyle Eagles and your Lubbock Cooper Pirates from Crutcher Scott Field, right here on the campus of Abilene Christian University. And uh, would be very, very much in trouble if I didn't shout out the pride of Shallow Water, Texas. I say that loosely, but the Meg Catwinkle and Shannon Schaffner, both listening on their way home from Dallas. I believe they had a little girls' trip. Girls' trips are always fun. If guys want to go on a trip, shut everything down. Why in the world? How? This is our guys' trip, Mr. Inlow. This is just how we drew it up. And really, I know when I speak for you and myself, there's nowhere we'd rather be right now. You unlike, are so correct. Unlike and and some, we, hope to, we hope to make one more 
toward the end of the week. But but some have chosen Janet Jackson over the Pirates this weekend, and and rightfully so. No way. But we are here in the top of the second inning. Tyler Spruill back on the mound trying to pick up where he left off as he'll face Parker Prater. Prater, the winning pitcher in yesterday's contest for the Eagles in the designated hitter role today. The 1-0 pitch gets across here for strike number one. And with a two-run lead here, Sproul ought to be able to relax just a little bit and settle in. Also want to say hello to Terry Bonner, Miss Bonner. I don't know that I've ever called her Terry to her face. But Miss Bonner listening from Gemini. So she, again, is going to win the award for farthest away listener. Miss Bonner is visiting her grandson, Connor, who is stationed in Germany with the United States Army. We give a shout-out and a salute to Connor. Very proud of that kid. Appreciate what he does and appreciate Tyler Spruill here as he will sit Parker Prater down with a swinging K for out number one here in the second inning. And a very nice off-speed pitch. We've seen Tyler go to that, Spruill, that is, go to that pitch to get batters out quite a bit over the last couple of weeks. One out here now in the top of the second inning where the Pirates lead 3-1. to one. It was a big first inning for the Pirates as they were able to score three runs in the bottom of the first after giving up a run that probably shouldn't have happened in the top of the first on an error. They settled down, they hit their little reset button, and were able to get the bats going on offense. Spruill coming back now, facing Connor Lillis. Lillis yesterday, two for three, with a single. Bats from the left side of the plate, as most of these batters do for Argyle. Fouls this one off toward the fence for strike number one. The count now will be two balls and one strike. Just at 36 minutes into the game now. Game three here in the 5A Region 1 Finals. Winner of this game will advance to the state tournament next week as this one high and outside for ball three. And you can kind of see some disgust there from Spruill possibly mad at himself just a little bit for letting that ball get up on him. Nonetheless, the 3-1 pitch for Lillis is across for strike two. Lillis thinks he's getting ball four and now wants to argue with the umpire, which is not something that I would advise to do in a game three situation when there may not be a tomorrow if, if your mouth overloads some other things. Emotions running high today in game three. Three balls, two strikes, swung on, and the bat flown out in the strikeout. Yes, sir. Tyler Spruill swung so hard the bat flew out of his hand, and that's the second K of this inning. And we talked yesterday about how little minor mistakes can take you out of your game mentally, and right there I think we see evidence of it as Lillis thought he had ball four, was called back to hit again, and swings and misses on the very next pitch and almost gave the Pirate fans a souvenir as that bat almost got into that Pirate dugout. I'm sure they would have returned it, though. And again, it's it's the emotions. It's it's hard to keep emotions in check in a game three with a state, with a state tournament berth on the line, but they're going to have to keep them in check. Beautiful and pitch by Tyler. Sandifer. Way out in front of that one for strike number one to even up the count at one ball and one strike. I think it's safe to say that the team who does keep those emotions in check the best will probably fare better than the other. And uh, Sandifer hits this one over to shortstop. Josiah Gonzalez fields it, fires it across to Haynes for out number three. And the Eagles go down in order. One, two, three for out number three. The Pirates still on top. Three to one from the regional final right here on the... 100.7 100.7 the score and the LCISD Athletics YouTube channel.
second inning, and the Pirates will start where they did in the first as they batted around in the first inning. Reed Ross back out for the for the Eagles, I believe. I'll have to see if we can check. I saw the umpire signaling for what appeared to be a position change, but it's not Reed Ross's position. He is still the pitcher, and Tyler Sproul still will be coming to the plate to start things off here in the second inning. Did want to mention Will Reed out in left field today with Sproul on the mound. Reed, a viable option um, in the outfield when Sproul's been called on to pitch. Normally would be the one pinch running for the Pirates. He'll not be able to do that today as he is a position player. I, I believe that's the rule. I could be wrong. I would need to ask our baseball aficionado, Colt Rogers, how that plays out, and he would probably defer to a rule book that he hasn't seen since high school. But... Um, he would definitely do his best, and, and we would sound very convincing even if we weren't 100% sure. But we will get things going here in the bottom of the second inning as Sproul facing Ross again. Hits this one toward the right side again. all Again, and this one unfortunately is going to be caught for out number one. That's the same direction that he went his last at bat to get on base. That's going to bring now Cohen Peepcorn to the plate. Peepcorn reached on an error in the first inning as his bunt was well-timed. The third baseman for the Eagles starts to scoot in. Peepcorn wants to hit this one out to left field. The left fielder takes a few steps to his right and is able to pull that one in, Connor Lillis. And so far the Pirates have struck the first couple of pitches that they've seen both for outs, one and two. Ross at 34 pitches so far on the afternoon. Make that 35 and 36 now. And if you can get him to an elevated pitch count, Mr. Inlow, that is a good thing for the Pirates as this third pitch is a strike. So Ross, working fast now, has thrown three strikes to start the bottom of the second inning as he'll face Timothy Haynes for the second time. Haynes walked in his first at bat. He hits this one out to left center field, and the center fielder able to run that one down. Braden Rosquez takes it down, and the Pirates go down in order. Here in the second, they score no runs on no hits with no errors. The score will remain Argyle 1, Lubbock Cooper 3 from the regional finals right here on 100.7 The Score in the LCISD Athletics YouTube channel. Game three, Lubbock Cooper Pirates versus the Argyle Eagles, both very well-respected programs around the state of Texas. Argyle making the move from 4A to 5A this year and not dropping or skipping a beat when it comes to competition as they made deep playoff runs in both football and basketball and I'm sure other sports because they, they have a lot of athletes and they're really good at what they do, um, the girls as well for that matter. But today's baseball game sees the Lubbock Cooper Pirates with an early 3-1 to one lead, um, which as we've seen and saw yesterday, in really each game, no lead has been secure until the final out was made in the seventh inning. Yeah, no lead is safe with these two teams playing today. It's very important, and you'll hear me say this more than once, this is, this is a big inning. It's important. It's important for us to do what we've been doing. Tyler made a point to Randy Rosetta after last night's game that that 
that they did relax, and, and again, there's just no relaxing in this game. We need Tyler to pitch ahead of these kids in this inning. As he faces Braden Rosquez, the center fielder, for the first time, able to get a strike across to even up the count. Now at one ball and one strike, Rosquez yesterday 0 for 2 with a walk in that game. Swings and misses on this one nice for strike number 2, and Sproul gets ahead in the count, one ball and two strikes. We've seen Tyler come back out the second and now this inning and just looks to be a little more confident. Maybe those nerves have passed off a little bit. And maybe confident, not the right word, but a, a lot calmer, if you will. Um, and this one low and, in, and away for ball two. But I, I believe that uh, our, our good friend Aaron White said that she would labor all of the nerves that Tyler had if that would help. And so maybe that's what we're seeing. He's channeling his nerves to her, and she's taking care of it now. The 2-2 pitch high. Ball three will fill up the count now at three balls and two strikes. Our good friend Troy Hounshell and his daughter Shmeva listening back in Lubbock. Always faithful listeners. The 3-2 pitch here from Sproul. Swung on and missed. And the tag, and that will be four, excuse me, three of the last four strikeouts for Tyler Sproul to give him four on the day. That's going to bring Colton Rockmore to the plate. Rockmore reached base in his first at bat via the walk. He was perfect yesterday, and so far in the last five at bats, he's found a way to get on base each time as this one is going to be hit up the middle, singled for the second baseman make that six in a row now for Rockmore reaching base here in this regional final. We need to erase him. He's a little bit too comfortable out there on first base. That'll bring J.C. Davis to the plate. Davis singled in his first at bat. Rockmore, kind of like Tyler Sproul in the fact that when he gets on, he's able to advance. Peaks around second base here as this ball gets past Sanderson. It will be a pass ball as that one just jumped over Sanderson. And you see the dimensions of this park playing a role as that ball got way back there in a hurry. Fortunately, the Pirates able to keep Rockmore at second base here with Davis at the plate. One ball, no strikes to count here for the shortstop. As this one is high and away for ball one, ball two to move Davis ahead in the count at two balls and no strikes. Davis has been fielding his position well thus far today, recording two putouts against the Pirates. So far, the 2-0 pitch Sproul peeks back at Rockmore, and then he'll step off and move Rockmore back to second base. Good move by Tyler just to keep him honest. Again, these Argyle base runners are just relentless. Rockmore with speed, Davis with speed. The 2-0 pitch outside of the zone now for ball three, and the Pirate fans wanting a strike there. The umpire... Home plate umpire disagreeing. I believe Sanderson kind of asking him where he would like that. And uh, you, this is now the third plate umpire that you've had in three games. Just got to figure out that strike zone here. The 3-0 pitch, as I'm sure Davis will be taking. Put it on a tee, Tyler Sproul, and he does for strike number one. We saw Tyler fall behind in some counts early on, was able to work his way back into them. Now hopefully the case as he faces Davis, the 3-1 pitch now, as he gets the sign from Sanderson, he'll peek back at Rockmore. Josiah Gonzalez holding Rockmore at second. Gus Cook with the daylight pick, not in time. One of my top two favorite wakeboarders Logan Vaughn and her dad, Kelly, listening at Southwest Texas today. 
This one across for strike two. Now will fill up the count at three balls and two strikes to J.C. Davis. Rockmore over at second base. Davis at the plate. There's one out here in the top of the third inning. Pirates leading three to one in game three of the regional final. Winner of this game headed to the state tournament next week in Georgetown. This one hit over Gonzalez out into center field. Pete Corn will field it there. Fire at home. Haynes will cut it off. They'll have a run down here, and Haynes wisely will hold on to the ball and push Davis back to first base. Didn't try to do anything extra there, Timothy Haynes, as he was the cutoff man. And when you've got somebody with a baseball IQ with t- like Timothy Haynes, you want the ball in his hands. That was a heads-up play by Timothy. Sometimes it's best just to do nothing, just to, just to mitigate any damage. Runners on the corners here for the Eagles with one out. I'm sure Davis will be on the move. Sproul comes set here against Emerson. Emerson struck out in his first at bat. Was 0 for 2 yesterday at the plate. Hit by a pitch and walked. Facing Sproul now for the second time today. Sproul comes set. Looks over at first base. We'll come to the plate. And this one will be low and away for ball number one. Grady Emerson, the first baseman for the Eagles. Where's number one? Bats from the left side. Pickoff move over to first base to put Davis back. Not in time. That throw probably just a little bit of a Heads up, I I see you, I'm watching you. Now Sproul comes set, the 1-0 pitch. High for ball two to move the count now to two balls and no strikes. You do have to wonder how much this humidity will affect the players today as far as stamina is concerned. As conditioning is concerned, this 2-0 pitch curveball is high and outside for ball three, and you just got to wonder how much of this will affect Tyler Spruill as Josiah Gonzalez will call time and come over and have a conversation with his teammate. And, And I'm sure that conversation is going something to the effect of, well, I thought that was a strike. Well, I thought it was a strike too, but he didn't call it a strike, so we got to figure out how to throw one. Maybe. Could be. Sproul set the pitch across for strike number one to move the count now to three balls and one strike for J.C. Davis. Umpire's a little late on the draw there, isn't he? Keeps you wondering for a few minutes. Runner moves. This one popped out deep to Peepcorn. It will pop, probably score Rockmore. Peepcorn gets it and will fire it in. And the Eagles are going to be able to score a run on the sack fly there from Grady Emerson. It'll be out number two, and J.C. Davis will be held over at first base. Micah Roberts will come to the plate now. Roberts 0 for 1 today, 0 for 5 in the last two games popped out to second base in his first at bat of the day. Want to say hello to Ursula Caswell and KK listening from the beaches of Florida. What is it with pirate fans and beaches and watching baseball games? This throw gets away from Gonzalez and Cook. Luckily, Peepcorn charging in to back things up there. You knew Davis was going to probably be on the move, and he did take off second base. Emerson will be at the plate. The call on that pitch, I'm not, I believe was a ball. 1-0 pitch here from Sproul. Fouled back toward the backstop for strike number one. It goes right back to Sanderson. 
which tells us a lot about this, this backing area padded there on a concrete wall. So balls will probably ricochet back if they're hit hard like that or maybe if a ball flies over the catcher's mitt just a bit. One ball, one strike, the count here for Emerson. Two outs here in the top of the third inning. Pirates now lead 3-2 to two after that run scored by the Eagles. This one hit hard out to left field. Will Reed runges over to get it and Canicorn. catches it there. And I can tell you this, K.K. Caswell is loving that as Will Reed makes the final out here of the third inning. The Pirates will take a 3-2 lead into the bottom of the third. We'll need to find that offense they had in the first when we come back to the regional finals. Game three right here on 100.7 The Score and the LCISD Athletics YouTube channel. Come to the plate here to lead things off for the Pirates in the bottom of the third inning where they lead this regional final 3-2 to two in game three. And Mr. Inlow, they'll have to find that offensive production that they had in the first inning to try to create some cushion here as this game lingers on. Argyle will not go away, and Reed Ross is finding more and more comfort on the pitcher's mound for the Eagles. Coach, you're right. It's important that we, that we show some discipline up the plate. You know me in that first pitch swinging. Cutter Douglas hits this one high out to left field. The left fielder going to have to charge it. Tries and gets to it. He was sit back very deep. And Cutter Douglas popped that one high up into this Abilene sky. Connor Lillis able to charge in to catch it there. Four out number one. That will bring Carter Warlick to the plate. Warlick a big double in his first at bat of this afternoon. Scoring two runs for the Pirates. Loves to hit it to the left side as you see J.C. Davis shaded over there almost in shallow left field. This one low for ball number one. Want to say hello to my friends Roland and Addison Brown listening to us back at home. The sons of Robert and Mrs. Brown, the chemistry teacher. Yeah, Roland's my little buddy. I guess you could say they have chemistry. I guess you bump. could say that, Coach. This one low and outside for ball two to move Warlick ahead now in the count. Two balls and no strikes. I used to referee Robert's basketball games, he and his twin brother. Both former Pirates, by the way. They played baseball for this team and part of the history here as Warlick sees the first strike across now. Two balls and one strike to count. Not 3-0 like the scoreboard indicates. This one low and away for ball three. We'll move the count now to three balls in one strike. Ross comes set the pitch. Lined out into left field once again right at Lillis who had to take a step in. And Warlick is really hitting the ball hard. That one was just right at Ellis on a line. Able to get that one in. It's not Ellis, it's Lillis, excuse me. That'll be out number two and Josiah Gonzalez coming to the plate for the Pirates. Gonzalez struck out in his first at bat. We'll see what he can do here against Reed Ross. Breaking pitch in there for strike number one. That curveball just did make it into the strike zone. No balls in one strike. Now the count for the senior shortstop. Hits this one over to the left side. Davis is going to have to make a play, and this one's going to get through. It'll be a single 
for Josiah, and that is just what the doctor ordered for the Pirates here in the third. There's a little two-out rally getting sparked here by the Lubbock Cooper team. And coach, as we've talked about throughout the playoffs, the bottom, the bottom part of the lineup, especially position six through nine, have really, really been seeing the ball well. We need them to pick us up right now. Sanderson in that seven-hole spot. Since game two of the Abilene series, this one low and inside. Sandifer has to slide over to keep that one in front. Will be in there for ball number one. Sanderson tells Gonzalez, don't go anywhere. I didn't get far enough away. Left-handed pitcher. Pirates going to have to be careful on the base pass. Had a pickoff yesterday. This pitch outside again called a strike will move the count now to one and one that one just looks very low in a way for me Mr. In Low but I'm pretty far away and, and we all know about my eye issues so I won't try to speculate or argue I'll just take it and you know me coach I'm a government teacher who always takes the high road this one hit over toward the second baseman he fields it there and Gonzalez is going to be thrown out at second base for out number three the Pirates send four to the plate and only able to squander one hit off of no errors. They score no runs. They leave one on. Here in the bottom of the third inning, the score will remain Eagles 2, Pirates 3 from the regional final right here on 100.7 The Score in the LCISD Athletics YouTube channel. Finals, 5A baseball, and Lubbock Cooper leads 3-2. to two. We mentioned earlier that run is not going to be enough as uh, this Argyle team will not go away quietly. But that's why you play game threes. That's why this baseball game is important. Um, the final, you know, whether it's a game seven or a game three, they're just exciting, and there's a lot of excitement in the air, and you can tell both fan bases are involved and engaged. Just makes it a lot of fun. Uh, Riley Robertson and her people all watching says a watch party. And if, if it's anything I know about Riley Robertson, she knows how to have a party. Lots of chips and dips, assortment of, of snacks. All gluten-free, by the way. Well, not all, because she, she takes care of her people, but... Glad the Robertsons are just great folks. Not only great pirate fans, but just great people. Well said. Yep. Good, good people. I mean, they might be watching at the lake, which if that's the case, I did not get an invite, and I'm a little bit offended by it. Back to the baseball, though, as Alex D'Angelo stands in. Now pops this one out to center field. Peepcorn's going to have to get on his horse and does. Runs it down. He and Sproul both going at it very hard, fortunately picking up each other. And by picking up each other, I mean seeing one another. That one could have been, and I don't use this word loosely, catastrophic if those two, and it's not Sproul, it's Will Reed. But again, which makes it even more um, understandable why that could happen, Reed, not commonly the left fielder, and Peepcorn 
the communication just has to be even bigger with those two. At Great this point. communication, Cohen, Cohen, Cohen calling Will off. Great job by Cohen. And it'll be the second time that D'Angelo's flown out to the center fielder here for out number one. Um, it was out number three in the first, out number one here as Parker Prater stands in. Prater 0 for 1 this afternoon, struck out in his first at bat. We do want to say if you haven't sent in a, a text or hit us up on our LCISD Athletics Twitter account, we appreciate you guys tuning in on the LCISD Athletics YouTube channel, listening all over on 100.7 The Score. Um, Inlo and I would do this for somebody's grandma if she were the only one watching, but it's really cool to know that you guys are paying attention and hopefully we're telling the story the way we see it and uh, just to really appreciate you guys and gals and grandmas and, and aunts and uncles and and friends of the program. Coach, if you'll indulge me, there's a huge LCP fan listening to us in Bullard, Texas, just south of Tyler. Her name is Janie Odette. She just happens to be my mom. Man, moms are awesome. Moms rock. Miss Odette, you got a good one here. We're thankful for him. Thanks for sharing him. The 2-2 pitch here hits out front. And low for ball three will fill up the count now at three balls and two strikes for Parker Prater. There's another Bullard connection for all of us LCP fans. Our fantastic and awesome superintendent, Mr. Bryant, came to us from Bullard. Bullard, you can never have him back. Not on your lives. The 3-2 pitch popped up out of play. Count will remain three balls and two strikes. Those of you maybe listening or watching on your Devices, if you want to comment or chat, join the 100.7 The Score chat line on the 100.7 The Score app and 107thescore.com. Feel free to comment there. Let us know where you're watching, how you're watching, how you're listening. As Parker fouls this one off again, he got a hold of that one, but it's going to be way out of play, and the count will remain three balls and two strikes. Parker Prater, the starting pitcher yesterday, as I mentioned earlier, was able to get the win for the Eagles. Now in the designated hitter role today, Sproul will come set the 3-2 pitch, and this one's going to be popped up to right field. Cutter Douglas is going to run to it. Haynes is going to run to it. And Douglas is going to call everybody off. And that is the communication that we're talking about, where you have three Pirates all converging on one ball. And it is the center, the right fielder, excuse me, and rightfully so. If he can play, it should be the one doing it. Gus Cook and Timothy Haynes both trusting their senior right fielder to get that one, and he'll call it in for out number two. And the Pirates now two outs here in the top of the fourth inning with Connor Lillis coming to the plate. Coach, that was a beautiful, beautiful play by Cutter. Cutter, a future LCU baseball player. My friend, good friend, longtime friend, Clint Horsley, watching from his patio in Lubbock, Texas today, and he has got a nice patio from what I've heard. I've not ever been invited. This one hit right back up to Sproul. He'll field the position there. As my good friend Colt Rogers would say, PFP by the senior lefty for out number three. And the Pirates put them down in order, one, two, three. They'll take that 3-2 lead into the bottom of the fourth inning when we come back from the regional final right here on 100.7 The Score and the LCISD Athletics YouTube channel.
Game three of the Region 1 5A Finals. And it has been quite the series with Lovett Cooper winning game one, Argyle winning game two. We find ourselves here in game three. And Mr. Inlow, some important Pirates watching around the world and one of our favorite all time. Absolutely, Coach. We have to give a huge shout-out to our good friends, the Farmers, who are listening in Arizona. And they are, they're waiting on Tyser, a former Pirate, great athlete, now a United States Marine. He's, they're waiting for him to come home from deployment. And they're all listening with his wife, Caitlin, all great pirates. In fact, Tyser's sister, Tatum, is a great volleyball player for LCP. We are, we are so proud of Tyser. He is a great United States Marine. We have, we have many, many pirates serving around the world. We salute them all. LeBlanc steps in now for the pirates. Hits this one over on the right side. It's going to be fair and playable there by Emerson. He'll take the base on his own. And a good hit there by LeBlanc. Just right at Emerson, who was able to take a few steps over to record that out on his own for out number one. I believe Caitlin, also a former Pirate. Tyser's wife, we'll call her Miss Farmer now. Caitlin was a softball player. Gus Cook tries to pull this one down the left field line. It's going to be foul for strike number one. Gus popped out to the shortstop on a little short blooper there in the bottom of the first inning. It was the Pirates scoring three in the first to take this 3-2 lead as this one sails on Ross just a bit high for ball number one. Want to say hello to the Smoznas, especially Miss Smozna, recovering from shoulder surgery back at home. Hopefully she's enjoying what she's hearing and not having to worry about that shoulder as Cook swings through this one, and it looks like Sandifer might have taken one in, uh, in the spot and then said something to the Pirate bullpen, and the fans did not think too kindly of it. And uh, the third base umpire coming out here, and I believe he's going to warn both dugouts. I'm high, not. high emotion in this game three, not only with the players, with the fans, and, and this has been such a such a great such a great series between these two two fantastic teams. It looks like the Amps are doing a good job to keep everything under control, and, and we understand fans get emotional. We're big fans as well. But, but, folks, we're all better than that. Let these kids play the game. And uh, I'm not certain what is going to be done here. I believe a game administrator is going to be called on. All of the umpires are going to get together. And um, I guess I'm not certain exactly. They're pointing at a, at a fan. Coach, while we have this break in the action, I just got a text from Caleb Henderson, Tatum's former volleyball coach, who is watching as he is doing some, we'll call it domestic duties in the backyard. Mm. Well, good for him. Game administrators are talking to Pirate fans. It, after Sandifer got hit, I believe something was said over here, and I believe we are going to have to have a fan escorted out. Unfortunate here. And, um, I mean, Sandifer definitely said something to the Pirate dugout that was seemed inappropriate. We're pretty far away and can't hear it. Um, but several uh, game administrators here. You have um, Miss Pesterfield in attendance. Um, not planning on working today, but it looks like she may have to. And it uh, looks like we might get to resume baseball here. Uh, Gus Cook at the plate. Coach, we've all been there. Our sons are all, we're all athletes in high school, and, and, and people get caught up in the moment. But, again, we're just, we're just better than that, and, and all the fans need to keep their emotions in check. It, it doesn't do anything to help your team. We are back to baseball here, though. One ball, two strikes is the count here for Gus Cook. Ross gets the sign. The pitch is high. 
for ball two. And you can kind of see that this has uh, sparked a little bit of uh, the Pirate fan base. Cook hits this one over to Davis. Davis is going to field it there, fire it over quickly to first, and Gus Cook is going to be thrown out for out number two. What we've seen from J.C. Davis is that he fields the position very well. Coach, you have to give credit where credit's due. Davis has had a fantastic series. He, he really fields the shortstop position well. Tyler Spruill will get things going now. One for two on the afternoon. Both hits have been out to right field. One successful, one was caught. And this one he has to turn on just a bit to avoid being hit with the pitch. Brooke McDowell listening back at home with the McDowell crew. Not really sure who all's there. As Sproul hits this one again over to Davis, he'll field it there on one hop, throw it across for the out, and Tyler Sproul will be retired. And the Pirates again go down in order. One, two, three in the fourth. We'll head to the top of the fifth when we come back from the regional final. Pirates leading 3-2 to two right here on 100.7 The Score and the LCISD Athletics YouTube channel. In the regional final from Crutcher Scott Field on the campus of Abilene Christian University in Abilene, Texas. And probably one of the more normal days of this series, Mr. Inlow, is uh, the weather looks good. The fans are here. And as we just saw, the fans are very emotional. Both fan bases um, hopefully won't be a very big part of the game. We're not at liberty to say who's kicked out. And even if, if I knew who it was, I wouldn't do that to a person. Um, but um, there's always two sides to a story as well. So uh, we're, we're going to keep focusing on the baseball moving forward. want to say hello to Scott Klein and his people all listening back in Lubbock saying, let's go Pirates. And uh, our favorite, our favorite, favorite, one of our favorite secretaries, Miss Parrish, a faithful listener, getting her hair did and listening to the broadcast. We love Kim Parrish. And, um... I don't know if this is the baseball gods or what, but Sandifer will lead things off here for the Eagles and sees the first pitch from Spruill called ball number one. Sandifer 0 for 3 yesterday and grounded out to the shortstop today. This one outside for ball two. And this is, this is an important inning for, for not only Tyler, but the entire LCP defense. It, again, when these, when these Argyle runners reach base, they're, they're just relentless, and, and, and you can never get too comfortable. This one swung on and missed, and that will get a huge reaction from the Pirate faithful after the exchange earlier. We do know um, that um, quite an extensive vocabulary over in that eagle dugout. The 1-2 pitch on the way here from Sproul hit 
lined over toward the left side and Sandifer will reach on the infield single. Will more than likely have a courtesy runner come out of that dugout for the Eagles as Sandifer is the catcher. Not sure yet on who that runner is. Number is number nine. And um, I have to check out my trusty lineups here. And again, the defense needs to be aware this kid will probably be going fairly quickly. Sproul with a quick pickoff move back early here to put him back on base. This courtesy runner is Bruce. Gets a good lead over at first base. Sproul comes set at the belt. The pitch to Rosquez as he squares to bunt. Good Almost. recovery by good recovery by Connerson. My bad. Sanderson. Connor. Almost gets away from him there. Able to bring it back. Tyler Sproul, 70 pitches currently. Runner takes off and not going to be able to make a throw, but there will be a strike called at the plate to move ahead in the count. One ball and two strikes. Bruce was able to get second base with ease. And as we've seen throughout the series, Argyle's, Argyle's very aggressive on the base paths. It, it Sort of like it was at Grapevine, it seems like they've got a runner at second every inning. One out here in the fifth, excuse me, no outs here in the fifth. Runner on second, Rosquez squares to bunt, will lay it down. Sproul will have to go to first in time. But Sandifer's pinch runner, Bruce, will be able to advance. Rosquez will be thrown out at third. And who else but Colton Rockmore, who has been perfect over the last two games at getting on base, will now come to the plate. This one outside looked to be a good one to me, Mr. Inlow. The umpire disagreed. It'll be ball number one here for Colton Rockmore. Kenda Davies, a uh, pirate photographer, listening from her editing chair. I'm sure she's working on several senior pictures. She probably always got somebody's pictures to, to work on and fix up. Tyler needs to reach down right here and end this kid's streak. He's been, he, he's been wearing us out the entire series. Let's end it here. One ball, one strike to count here. One out in the top of the fifth inning. Runner over at third base. Infield is in to try to knock down the run. Rockmore, a check swing here. The ball is going to be called a ball. Uh, nobody's going to check the swing as it looked like Rockmore had plenty of restraint there tough pitch want to say hello to the crew over at two docks brewery listening uh, there hope they're having a good time as well two balls and one strike to count here Sproul comes set throws it across and it's going to be outside for ball number three to move the count now to three balls and one strike it was in the first inning that the Pirates were able to plate three to Argyle's one. Later on, Argyle tacked on a run in the third. Both teams scoreless in the second and fourth. We're here in the fifth with a runner on third and one out. The Argyle leadoff man at the plate, and this one squirts away from Sanderson, and Rockmore will head down to first base, and again, beyond base for the Eagles. That'll bring J.C. Davis to the plate. Davis so far has reached base twice in his two at-bats. And Rockmore will be taking off from first base. I can guarantee that. And really just dare the Pirates on what they want to do. And Coach Chris Baker 
will come out of the dugout probably to talk some things over as far as defensive strategy is concerned as we see Caden Terry heading out to that first base bullpen. Terry came in late in the game yesterday, threw one pitch, got one out, will possibly be the reliever that the Pirates decide to go to. And coach, we've been we've been going over and over again the the emotions in a game three in a series, especially when a state title, state birth is on the line. And I've noticed the Argyle players have have been really classy this entire series, but they're coming they're becoming a little more animated today. And 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 again, I know I know this is an emotional game, but we need to just play the game, check those emotions, keep them in the dugout. My buddy Aiden Borrego listening back at home advanced in the city tournament today but was more excited to get home to watch the Pirates play. So we appreciate that. He's also a pretty good cheerleader. I give him a hard time about that. He's not really a cheerleader. I just joke with him. You know, a little prod here and there. This mound visit comes to an end. J.C. Davis will be at the plate for the Eagles. Runners on the corners. Kind of shades of yesterday, if you will, with the Pirates taking an early lead in the first. Have been scoreless since then. The Eagles kind of chipping away here. Runners on the corners. Bruce at third. Rockmore takes off. The pitch here inside. A fake throw and uh, gets no one. And you can see Rockmore sliding in safely and popping up to say something again. Davis sees that one go by for a ball. And that was probably more what the mound visit was about than anything else. And Davis calls time here. This one going to be low for ball number two. This one hit over toward the left side foul for strike number two to even up the count now at two balls and two strikes. One out here in the top of the fifth inning. Pirates leading three to two. This one popped up high in the air. Gonzalez is going to be able to get under it and plays it. And it will go down as an out. J.C. Davis pops up to the shortstop. The Pirates will be able to move back to regular depth here with Grady Emerson coming to the plate. Emerson hit a sack fly in his previous at bat, struck out in his first at bat. Runners on second and third here for the Eagles. Tyler Spruill working on the mound here in the fifth. The Pirates winning big in game one. The Eagles winning in game two, as Mr. Inlow mentioned. The score right now between the two games, eight to eight. Why not a game three? Why not today? The pitch here popped up high out into center field. Peepcorn on his horse, turns and runs, gets under it, and calls it in. Cohen Peepcorn with a big play for the Pirates and keeping the Eagles off the board. They'll take a 3-2 lead, Will Lovett Cooper, into the bottom of the fifth from Game 3 Region 1 Finals when we come back right here on 100.7 The Score in the LCISD Athletics YouTube channel.
and doing a very good job will take us to the bottom of the fifth, remain in front with that lead 3-2. to two. Coach, all the credit to Tyler in that inning, just to reach down and do what he had to do. Again, he knows what he has to do. He knows what he can do. And, and, and again, it's, it's, the crowd's getting a little agitated. Tyler really, really responded in that last inning. As you've said many times, emotions will run high in a series like this and of this caliber. Ross back out to work here, facing Pete Corn. First pitch is a ball. Second pitch is a strike. We'll even up the count here at one ball in one strike. Cohen Peepcorn on the day, 0 for 2, reached on an error in his first at bat, popped out to the left fielder in his second at bat, hits this one foul toward the backstop on the left side, and the count will run to three balls and two strikes. And I have just written on my shorts with a blue pen. If any of you mothers, and I mean that like you're a mom, don't take it the wrong way. Peepcorn hits this one over to second base. It's going to be fielded there in time and thrown out at first base is Cohen Peepcorn. I was just going to say if you have any kind of like washing remedies to get ink out of khaki shorts, I'd appreciate it. That'll bring Timothy Haynes to the plate. Haynes so far today walked in his first at bat, popped out in the second at bat, almost gets hit here in the beginning of his third at bat. But what we can tell you about Timothy Haynes is that he has not hit successfully in the last four at bats that he's had. He is due. Hits this one foul toward the right side to even up the count at one ball and one strike. You can kind of hear at home if you can't see it on our YouTube channel, the uh, fan bases are growing restless. And it's a good baseball game. I mean, don't take anything away from what's going on on the field as Haynes gets ready for the 1-1 pitch. High elevated for ball two. Uh, you see former players in the dugout today as uh, Caden Klein is down there. Or maybe that's Skylar White. Kyle Lewis down there representing their former teammates. Haynes pops this one up high out to center field. Rosquez going to be able to get underneath it, and that'll be Timothy's second time flying out to center field. It'll be out number two. Appreciate those uh, suggestions on the old short deal. Our good buddy Raleigh Shepard listening back at home. Hairspray. Not an aerosol kind. Okay. Well, I clearly don't use any hairspray, but appreciate that. Beth Dallas, mom to Callan Dallas, took uh, Callan to Utah this week, which I'm sure was, uh, we'll say, an emotional experience. As Cutter Douglas stands in here for the Pirates. Cutter one for two on the afternoon. One single in the first inning. Facing Ross here, two balls and no strikes. The count currently likes this one that he sees, and it's going to be fouled back toward the backstop for strike number one. He'll walk around the batter's boxes just to collect his thoughts again and refocus. Two balls and one strike. Now the count for Cutter Douglas. Two outs here in the top of the fifth inning. Ross from the windup throws this one high for ball three. Douglas will be ahead in the count now. Three balls and one strike. And if you're Cutter Douglas here, I think you're probably going to sit curveball. Ross has tried to throw that thing for strikeouts effectively in just a straight heater here as Douglas is able to time it and match it on um, push it foul to fill up the count now at three balls and two strikes. Cutter just needs to show discipline at the plate during this at bat. We, we really, really need our the top of our lineup to produce for us, to give us a few more runs in this inning. Man, I'm so glad. This one hit Just hard like out that. to center field, and it's going to be down for a single. Cutter Douglas with a big single to start the two-out rally here for the Pirates. Right out into center field. And didn't know if that one was going to carry Mr. Inlow, if it was going to sit down, and it just does touch down 
in that ACU logo out in center field. And that'll bring Carter Warlick to the plate. Warlick started off the scoring, um, didn't start it off, but added to it with a huge two-run double. He flew out to left field in his second at bat. And we'll see what he can do here in the third at bat. This one is going to be high for ball number one. We know Warlick loves to pull the ball toward the left side of the field. Thanks again to all of you guys letting me know that hairspray, it does have to be aerosol can, will get ink out. Fun fact here from Coach Poe and all you mothers out there. This one inside and away for ball two. And Warlick will be ahead in the count now at two balls and no strikes. Pirates leading three to two here in the bottom of the fifth inning. Scoring three in the first. Argyle scoring one in the first and third. Cutter Douglas over at first base. This one outside for ball three, and that'll be three straight balls thrown here by Reed Ross, which is one of the first times we've seen him do that in a long time, Mr. Inlow. Cutter just uh, check that. Carter needs to just, again, show discipline. He needs to find that, find that hot corner. This Take, one's taking all the way on that pitch. It's going to get across for strike number one. Count will be three balls and one strike. If Warlick was paying attention to cutters at bat, he knows here that Ross will potentially try to throw the gas here. He'll go fastball. The 3-1 count as Ross checks over the pitch. Set up low and outside will be ball four, and Carter Warlick will be on base. He will step, take the trip down to first, and Coach Winchie potentially could be putting in a pinch runner, and it will be Sam Castro. I believe this runner will be for Cutter Douglas. We saw Sam Castro enter the game last week against Grapevine, and he single-handedly discombobulated the pitcher, Mr. Inlow. Sam wreaked havoc on the base pass last on the base pass last week. And it's what he does. He knows his role on this team, as all 25 do, and his role right now is to run bases when his number's called. He wears 31. He'll enter the game at second base. There's two outs here in the fifth. Josiah is another kid that's due. Ross comes set, has the sign here from Sandifer. This one high and outside for ball four. And over the last six pitches, five of those have been for balls. Only one strike. Castro is at second base. Warlick is at first base. Two outs here in the bottom of the fifth inning. Reed Ross getting the sign from Sandifer. Josiah Gonzalez at the plate for the Pirates. This one low and away for ball two. And Josiah moves ahead in the count now. Two balls and no strikes. Coach, as I've said before, I'm just a government teacher, but I'm taking a pitch right here. You're not just a government teacher. You're a great government teacher. This one does get by for a strike. Josiah still ahead in the count. Two balls and one strike. So far today, Josiah... 0 for 2, struck out in his first at bat, grounded out in a fielder's choice. He was not out, but he was thrown out at second base. Pickoff move here, not going to even make a throw. And coach, on that last pitch, that's why I am a government teacher. Castro doing all he can at second base to discombobulate Reed Ross. With a good lead, not held on very tightly. Warlick able to get another lead. This one outside is going to be called a strike. And I disagree with that, which is fine because I'm not umpiring this game. But that one is almost in the left-handed batter's box. And I don't think they make 40-inch bats. Just Nonetheless, just two balls, discipline right here. two strikes, two outs. Deuces Wild here in the bottom of the fifth. Copyright Colt Rogers 2023. Colt Rogers, our, our colleague who coined that phrase early on in the season, is on daddy duty right now. Probably listening back at home with his wife, Roger, and their, his wife, Roger, his wife, Bridget. The 2-2 pitch 
hit up the middle right at the second baseman. He'll flip it over to the shortstop for out number three, and the Pirates will score no runs in the bottom of the fifth on one hit, and they'll leave two on. We'll come back for the sixth when we return from the regional final right here on 100.7 The Score in the LCISD Athletics YouTube channel. Innings here from the Region 1 5A Baseball Series between the Argyle Eagles and your Lubbock Cooper Pirates. And right now the Pirates on top 3-2. to two. Argyle will send their 4-5-6 batters to the plate here in the top of the sixth inning and uh, have been within striking distance several times so far this year and this season, especially today. Coach, this is a... This is just a, a very important inning for the Pirates. Tyler Tyler has been doing what he has to do today. He is laboring a little bit. I know his pitch count is up. And it's, it's, it's just so important that he stays ahead of the batters here in this inning. Because these, again, I repeat myself, but, but Argyle is so aggressive on the bases. He needs to do all he can to keep them clean. We'll see what the senior lefty can do. He knows that there is no tomorrow after this for this Pirate team and a team that is he, de he loves so much. He's been a leader of this team, has been a part of this program since his freshman season. We'll see what he can do here. First pitch here to Roberts, popped up high out to right field. Douglas is going to get to it and glove it there to record out number one. And what's important about that, Mr. Inlow, is that Tyler was able to get an out with one pitch. You mentioned the pitch count. Now that was pitch 82. Tyler down to his final 28 pitches as he will face Alex D'Angelo. D'Angelo, 0 for 2 today, had a very big day in game two. Lefty on lefty matchup once again here as this one is a little bit elevated for ball number one. Tyler knows what's at stake as well as does his Pirate teammates. The Pirate fans making noise. The Argyle fans making noise. You've got all kinds of racket being made. The 0-1-1-0 pitch lined out to right field again. Cutter Douglas will stand over and tell Perfect. his senior teammate, I got you, brother. Perfectly played by Cutter. And, again, this is this is just what the doctor ordered for, for Tyler uh, if, if he can stay ahead of these batters, keep his pitch count down, just, just good things are going to happen. And, and, and we know his defense is behind him. And, we know the, and again, we've said it a million times today, they know what's at stake here. Everyone is a little bit tight, but everybody is catching that ball a little bit more surely than they have been in, in past games. Tyler hits seven. Uh, Lillis, Lillis is going to take a walk to first. But that really means nothing. What we need to do is just get this third out. Lillis will be on base now. He provides the tying run right now. The winning run, or excuse me, Parker provides the tying run as he will be the one that heads to first base. Lillis will come to the plate. Lillis 0 for 2 on the afternoon, lined out to Sproul in his last at bat. This one outside for ball one as Tyler Sproul gets ready to do battle here with Connor Lillis. 
Appreciate Corey Bateman listening and watching back on his porch as well, saying go Pirates. Hayden Shepard listening. Heather Hinthorn watching from the porch. All you people watching from your porch. Inlo and I love a good porch, don't we? With, with, with good refreshments. Good refreshments, good people. Good fans. Love it. All these good people listening on the chat line. Remember, if you want to comment on the chat line, join us on your mobile app or 100.7 The Score or the 107thescore.com. The 1-1 one, one pitch here from Sproul. A pickoff move over at Prater will put him back on base. Kind of just keeping him honest, Mr. Inlow. We talked well, you, about know, you know he's going to be going. You know they're, they're going to send him. They've been doing it all day. He's concentrate on this batter, get this third out. We talked about administrators and VP at Miss Herrera listening back at home. Another pickoff move will keep Prater honest. And uh, Tyler, even with the batter at the plate, with the one and one count to Connor Lillis. We'll see what he can do here as he continues to compete. And that's all you can ask him to do. This one lined over toward the left side. Gonzalez lays out for it. And it's going to get through. Will Reed going to bring it back in. And the Eagles now have the winning run over at first base. And Hunter Sandifer coming to the plate. And I don't think I need to reiterate the uh, love, no love relationship here with Sandifer. He's one for two on the afternoon. Reached on a line drive to left field in his last at bat. Tyler Spruill on the mound. Runners at first and second for the Eagles. Prater at second. Lillis at first. Sandifer hits this one out to center field. Peepcorn's going to have to charge it. It's going to get gonna down. Send him. Runner's going to come home. Sanderson has it, and the run is going to be safe. Prater has scored the run, and Sandifer with the RBI single for the Eagles. And we are all tied up at three. Bang, bang, play at home plate. Sandifer just a little bit out front of home plate. And Prater able to slide safely to the outside of that. Winning run is still at second base as Rosquez will come to the plate. Braden Rosquez. 0 for 2 today, struck out in his first at bat, lined out, bunted his way out in his second at bat. We'll see what he can do here with Tyler Spruill ready to go. This one high for ball one. Momentum has swung just a bit to the Argyle side. This Pirate fan base making noise for their team as well. One ball and no strikes to count here for the center fielder for the Eagles, Braden Rosquez. Lillis at second base. Bruce, the courtesy runner at first base. This one elevated, and they're going to be able to throw him out at third base. Beautiful play by Lillis Connor. Lillis picked Beautiful off play. by Connor Sanderson, and the Pirates able to get out of the inning. We'll head to the bottom of the six. Now all tied up at three from the Region 1 final here on 100.7 The Score and the LCISD Athletics YouTube channel.
game to finish up for the Eagles. Lillis was the one that was called on yesterday. Want to say hello to Hunter Nelson. He and uh, Marley listening back at home doing a little barbecuing. Well, buddy, save us a plate. All right, we'll see you soon. Hunter Nelson, also another former Pirate baseballer. Hunter was a great Pirate baseball player. Marley was a fabulous LCP softball player. How do you think that conversation goes at the house on which was better in their sport? They're Probably. so much in love, I sure, I'm sure they agree on everything, I bet coach. you're right, Coach. I bet you're right. You're better. No, you were better. No, you no, were. No, you were. Starting off here now with Lillis facing Connor Sanderson. Sanderson, 0 for 2 on the day, sees the first offering from Lillis here, high and away for ball one. And this one right down the pipe for strike one to even up the count at one ball and one strike. The Pirates... Desperately needing to try to manufacture a run here some way, somehow. This one inside now for strike two. And Connor Lillis ahead in the count at one ball and two strikes. Wants to work very quickly. This one high for ball two and a great job there by Sanderson. Showing some discipline and restraint, not trying to attack that pitch. And it evens up the count now at two balls and two strikes. This one popped out toward the right side. It's deep. The right fielder backing up, continuing to carry. And it's going to be caught there by Alex D'Angelo for out number one. That'll bring Bryce LeBlanc to the plate. LeBlanc, the designated hitter today for the Pirates. And Inlo, when you look out in this field, something that you don't see today that we've seen the previous two games is a wind. Virtually no wind right now. Those flags are as still as I've seen them in the last two days. And, and again, the, the air is very heavy today. And we just need this, this game ominously in some respects looks like yesterday we had a big first inning and 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 the Argyle pitchers have, have pretty well held the pirate the pirate batters at bay the rest of the game. We need to do something just to like you said manufacture a run, break it open a little bit here. Two balls, no strikes, the count here for LeBlanc. This one way inside on the six foot eight junior for ball three, and I would assume that LeBlanc will be taken all the way on this pitch with the 3-0 count. Lillis will put this one on a tee, I'm sure. And it is across and outside for ball number four. And sometimes there are moments that the broadcasting jinx works for you. I will not take credit for that, but I might. Coach, while we have a chance, need to give a shout out to Mrs. Taylor, Brittany Taylor. The better half. Well, obviously. She is listening from the LBK with Baby Taylor. Coach Taylor had Coach Taylor and Brittany have a brand new baby. Looks like we will have a pinch runner into the game for the Pirates, and I believe it is Jules Torres, sophomore number twenty-three. He will be on base. There is one out here in the bottom of the sixth inning. Sandifer wants to come out and talk some things over with Lillis. Very, very gutsy move here with sophomore at the plate, sophomore on first base. Make no mistake, these guys have played a lot of baseball. Jules Torres, very speedy. We have seen a Meg Catwinkle sighting. She is in the stadium, folks. Hopefully it will be the same outcome as when Paul Inlow arrived late a few days ago. Gus Cook at the plate, sees the first pitch here from Lillis inside for ball number one, and Cook really frustrated thinking that he might have been able to wear that one to get on base with the hit by pitch. And again, the, the emotions in this game, every pitch, everyone's hanging on every pitch. People that don't think baseball is exciting, uh, I, there's just, there's nothing I can do for you. This one low and inside for ball two, and J.C. Davis wants to have a mound visit as well with Sandifer to try to settle down Connor Lillis. 
Tracy Nichols listening back at home, mother to Ethan Nichols, and then that other little brother, I can't remember his name, but he's a really good kid too. Ethan Nichols, trackster for the LCP track team, and quite the musician, Mr. Inlow. I don't know if you've had the luxury of sitting in and listening to Ethan sing some songs and pick the guitar, but it is nice. Appreciate them all listening in and tuning in as this one gets across after that mound visit for strike number one. Count will be two balls and one strike here for Gus Cook. A lot of speed over at first base, Mr. Inlow. Gus Cook at the plate, a pickoff move, and Jules able to get back safely. And I'm sure that they're going to try to keep Jules Torres as close to first as they can. Gus Cook at the plate, the 2-1 pitch. Lillis comes set. The throw outside will be ball three. And this, a hitter's count here for Gus Cook. And we know that Gus Cook has stepped up in big situations. And this one, one of the biggest. Three balls and one strike. One out is this one lined out to left field, high in the air. Left fielder is going to be able to get to it, and Cook hitting that one deep, but Torres is going to have to get back to first, and no harm there as Gus Cook has flied out for the second time today to the left side of the field for out number two. That'll bring the Pirate leadoff man to the plate in Tyler Spruill. Spruill is one for three today. Singled in his first at bat, flew out to right field in his second at bat, and then grounded out to short in the third. And they're paying particular attention to Jules over on first base. He does have really great speed. We need Tyler just to step up and help himself out right here. Tyler fouls this one back behind the netting for strike number one. Need to say hello to Carson Dodson. As I mentioned, his sister, he's the brother-in-law, Carson is, to Tyser Farmer. So getting a little bit of jelly there that I didn't say anything about him. So there you go, Dottie. I got you, my guy. This one up and out for ball number one to even up the count at one ball and one strike. Here with two outs in the bottom of the sixth inning, scores tied here three apiece in game three of this 5A Regional 1 final between Argyle and Lovett Cooper. Jules Torres is at first base. Tyler Spruill at the plate and a snap throw over to first. Not in time. It wouldn't bother me if their pitcher just parked one in right field when he goes over to first base. I mean, base. if he tried to hit Coach Baxter in the stomach, I would be okay with it. Torres takes off and it's gonna be fouled again. I believe that was a hit and run on there by the Pirates and that one's gonna be fouled and Coach, we have another Argyle Eagle up in the bullpen. Just, just again, to reiterate the emotions and the importance of this game. One ball, two strikes. Now the count for Tyler Spruill. Two outs here in the bottom of the sixth inning. Lillis comes set, fires it in, and it's going to be low for ball two. And that one too close for comfort for my liking, Mr. Inlow, as now we have an even count at two balls and two strikes here with two outs. Deuces are wild. Copyright Colt Rogers 2023. That was a tough take from Tyler. Good job. Torres with a, with a lead over at first. Lillis going to check him over there. Gets the sign. They'll try to pick off move again. It gets away but not far enough and Jules Torres wisely stays put. Coach Austin Taylor in the coach's box today as he has been the majority of the season. You mentioned his wife earlier and their new baby. Appreciate the sacrifices all of our coaches' wives make. The 2-2 pitch popped up high over on the right side. The second baseman gets under it. Rosquez has it, and that will be out number three. And we will go to the seventh inning here with the Pirates and the Eagles all tied up at three from the Region 1 5A Baseball Series right here on 100.7 The Score and the LCISD Athletics YouTube channel.
yesterday, threw one pitch, got one out. We'll see what he can do again here today as he will face Rosquez in the nine hole, then Rockmore and Davis, and Rockmore has been rock solid for the Eagles. Caden Terry, a senior hurler for the Eagles, for excuse me, for the Pirates. Fun fact about Caden, and I believe I might get this wrong, so I'm going to say both, but one game as Caden was on the JV squad threw a perfect game, either a perfect game. I believe game, he did. I believe and he I did. think it was a perfect game. You know his grandfather well as being a substitute, long-time substitute. Yes, he is. I appreciate him. And, and shout, uh, out, so shout out to Linus Terry. Linus, Great man. We'll see what Caden can do here as he gets ready to go to work. Not being called on much, but being called on now, and he looks pretty calm as he'll face Rosquez for the first time today. Gets this one high and outside for ball number one. One of the things we can see about Caden is he's is very tall, probably at about 6'2 or 3. That one gets out of the zone there for ball one. And Caden has been a role player for us this year. And all these, any of these kids, they know their role. They, they know what they need to do, and all they ask for is a chance. Caden has a chance right now to, to pitch on the biggest stage, and that's, that's all we can ask for. Caden is headed to Frank Phillips College on a baseball scholarship. Behind in the count here to Rosquez, two balls and no strikes. Gets this one across here for strike number one. And that's what he needed there on pitch number three. It'll move the count now to two balls and one strike. And with the movement Caden has on his, on his pitches, he just needs to get him to put it in play. He throws lots of ground balls. The 2-1 pitch on the way here. Popped up high over on the right side, and this one is going to be out of play for strike two to even up the count at two balls and two strikes. We're in game three here in the Region 1 finals. Lubbock Cooper winning game one. Argyle winning game two. The score, three to three here in the seventh inning. Caden Terry on the mound. The 2-2 count against Rosquez. This one outside, and I think that one just got a little bit away from Caden Terry. He'll have to finish that pitch to make it a strike if he throws it again. And... You talk about Caden Terry not having his number called many times, but the times that he has had it called has performed well. He's always been productive. Every outing I've seen him, he's been very productive. And this one popped up high out to center field. Cohen Peepcorn turns and runs, calls off Sproul, and he'll take it there by himself. And that will be out number one. And that's just what Caden needed. He needs to he needs to get the you know, that first out is so important. When a reliever comes in, he got he got the first out. He, we just need him to settle in and, again, throw throw those pitches that will get him some ground balls, get him out of the inning. Our LCP wrestling coach, Joe Rios, listening. LCP girls wrestling finishing third in the state this year as this one hit high out to Cutter Douglas. And Rockmore, Rock No More, is popped out to Cutter Douglas and finally – it's about, time, it's about time and, we erased him, And I it? say that with complete respect because this guy has been on base seven of his last eight at-bats, which is super impressive against the guys that he's faced. J.C. Davis now at the plate. Davis two for three today, facing Caden Terry now. This one outside for ball one. Caden Terry doing his job as the relief guy here for the Pirates. Facing J.C. Davis. Phenomenal shortstop for the Eagles. This one lined up the middle. Gonzalez is going to have a chance at it. Fields it. Fires it. Catches it at first base. Timothy Haynes. Punch him out, JoJo. Way to go. And Caden Terry coming off the mound. Pumped up as well he should be. A 1-2-3 inning for Caden Terry. Will sit the Eagles down in the top of the seventh. We're going to the bottom of the seventh with Pete Corn, Haynes, and Douglas right here from the Region 1 Finals on 100.7 The Score and the LCISD Athletics YouTube channel.
Headed into the bottom of the seventh inning here from Crutcher Scott Field on the campus of Abilene Christian University. It's the 5A Region 1 Final, Game 3 between Argyle and Lubbock Cooper and Co Peepcorn <coughs> headed to the plate for the Pirates. Peepcorn on the afternoon, 0 for 3, has reached on an error in his first at bat and really important to get the leadoff guy on here if the Pirates are able to do so. Lillis on the mound for the Eagles. Peepcorn hits this one over to first base. It's going to be fielded there. They're going to try to get there. Peepcorn's going to be safe. He's going to be safe. He might have gotten stepped on. TJ Bruns is out of the dugout to check on Peepcorn. And I can tell you this, if I know anything about Cohen Peepcorn, you're going to need to get a tow truck to take him out of this game. He dove head first into first. It was a bang-bang play at first, and he's up and walking it off. And I can't tell if it was a hand or a shoulder. T.J. Bruns looking at his hand. It's his left hand, and he is going to head back to first base. And we talked at the beginning of this telecast, Paul Inlow, about the guts of this team, and Cohen Peepcorn just put it on full display. There is no die in this team, and Cohen is such a gamer, such a warrior, such a competitor. And folks, if you couldn't see that play, that that was just an amazing that was an amazing play. Cohen getting down to first. I mean, this is why you play the game. If you're not listening or watching, call your mamas and them and tell them to tune in on 100.7 The Score or the LCISD Athletics YouTube channel as Lillis throws this one low for ball one. And you can see that Lillis is a bit rattled now, Mr. Inlow. Timothy Haynes is at the plate for the Pirates. Haynes is 0 for 3 on the day, or 0 for 2, excuse me, walked in his first at bat. Pete Corn with the small lead over at first. The pickoff move will not be in time, and that one almost got away from Emerson. If that one had gotten away... Peepcorn would have certainly been on second base. Cohen could have probably been on third if, if that hadn't gotten away with his speed. This one low and inside. I felt like low and inside. The umpire felt like it was a strike. This officiating group, umpiring crew out of the Abilene chapter have been here all three games. Now the 1-1 pitch for Timothy Haynes as Lillis comes set at the belt from the stretch. The pitch. Lined out to right field. This one is very high. It's playable, and it is going to be caught. That was quite a play by the right field. And there's not much more room out there to go to. Credit that catch to Alex D'Angelo as he's able to haul that one in. And Timothy Haynes is going to be recorded for out number one, bringing Cutter Douglas to the plate. Douglas, two for three on the afternoon with two singles. Flew out to left field in his second at-bat. Has singled in both other at-bats. Could use one of those singles here as he's set to face Lillis. Squares to bunt. And that's your cleanup guy squaring to bunt right there. Coach Winchy not phased and not afraid to make any call here for this Pirate team. I don't mind saying it here and now. Coach Winchy is without a doubt one of the best in the business. He, know, he knows what he's doing. He knows the situation. Coach, what we need Cutter to do is one of his patent doubles right here. That would just be beautiful. Whatever Cutter needs to do. Hits this one high in the sky. It's going to be on the infield. All of the infielders coming for it. Rockmore gets underneath it and brings it in for out number two, and that's going to bring Connor Carter Warlick to the plate. Now for the Pirates with two outs here in the bottom of the seventh inning. Our good friend Lynn Tucker listening back in Lubbock. Loving what he's hearing. I, I misrepresented our girls wrestling team. They finished second at the state tournament, not third. I, sh I should be putting an arm bar or something painful or something bad or have to ride in a Suburban with Zoe again. This one hit over toward the right side out of play and fouled. Zoe Bennett the person I'm referring to, medalist at the state tournament this year, medalist a year ago, doing great things for the wrestling program. Peepcorn here in the baseball game over at first base. Carter Warlick at the plate facing Lillis. The 0-1 pitch high for ball one. 
to even up the count at one ball and one strike. Cohen Peepcorn bunted or hit on safely in his first at, in his at bat of the first of this inning. Slid in safely, has a lead over at first, being held by Emerson. Warlick pops this one up on the right side. Emerson might have a chance to get to it. Gets to the dugout, and he's going to play it there, and that's how the Pirates will be retired. Folks, it's game three of the Region 1 final, and we're headed to extra baseball. Why not? That's how it's going to be decided here today. Extra innings in the Region 1 final from Crutcher Scott Field, Abilene, Texas. Eagles 3, Pirates 3 right here on 100.7 The Score and the LCISD Athletics YouTube channel. You got time for some extra baseball today. 3.15 on the clock, and we're headed to the top of the eighth inning. Extra innings baseball. Both of these teams not unfamiliar with extra baseball time. The Pirates having extra baseball a few weeks ago against Abilene. Looking for a different outcome today, certainly. And Caden Terry back out for his second inning of work here against this Eagle team. The Eagles will be sending their three, four, five batters to the plate. So and Coach, far we, we really can't expect anything less from these two great teams. As we've both said, if you the combined score of, of the first two games is eight to eight. So here we are, eight to eight, three to three in the eighth inning. What's not to love about this? We just need in, we need Caden to show the same resolve he showed in his first inning of relief. Let his infielders, let his outfielders back him up, get us back to the plate. In the words of Chris Level, sports. Terry, pitch, hits this one over to Haynes. Haynes is going to have to get it, throws it, and it's going to get by here. And Caden Terry... Not able to cover first base there. Kind of probably a little bit of brain lapse there as Haynes had to range a little bit too far away from it. And the Eagles now with the runner on, the go-ahead run over at first base in Grady Emerson. It was Emerson who scored the first run for the Eagles in game one. Now Micah Roberts at the plate. Roberts 0 for 3 today. Son of Coach Rios, Rex Rios, repping the Pirates today. Future state wrestler, I have no doubt. Robert squares the bunt, bunts this one up high. And Connor Sanderson with a huge baseball play. Having the frame of mind to let that ball sit and backspin foul. Had he touched that ball in fair territory, there would now be two eagles on the base path as opposed to just one with Roberts. Caden Terry on the mound now. No balls and one strike. The count for Micah Roberts. Roberts bunted in his first attempt. We'll see what he does here. Showing to swing away now. Terry comes set. Robert squares to bunt. This one out of the zone for ball one to even up the count at one ball and one strike. Robert's looking down to third base, trying to get his signs and has them now. 
Would not be surprised to see Emerson on the move, regardless of a laid bunt or a hit here, hit and run. Big leadoff over at first base by Emerson. Terry comes set the pitch, and it's in there for a strike. They're going to say he did not make an attempt at that. I find that hard to believe. The ball got right underneath the bat. They're going to say no attempt, and it's going to move the count now to two balls and one strike. It's very important for Caden to be cognizant of what's going on on the base pass because you know he's going to be on the move. Emerson gets the lead, being held on over there by Haynes. Terry comes set the pitch. And a cross and low for ball three. And the count now three balls and one strike for the Eagles. We'll probably see Robert square to bunt again here. Pickoff move over at first. Almost takes Haynes away there. Great job there by Timothy Haynes getting to the ball. The game within the game, Coach, is, is to see how Caden reacts with base runners on. He had a pretty easy go of it in, in the first inning of relief. Three balls, one strike. The count here for Roberts. The pitch across. Hit to Warlick. He'll field it there. Fire it to second base for the out. The turn will not be in time. It ricochets back to Haynes, who will bring it back and keep Roberts over at bay. Fortuitous bounce. Good job there by Warlick starting that double play. It just got a little bit high there by Gus Cook and elevated. Roberts going to reach on the fielder's choice. will bring Alex D'Angelo to the plate for the Eagles. And I'm not sure what the uh, coach was talking about. It looks, it looks about. like Coach Mullins from Argyle was, was questioning whether that should have been, whether he should have been able to take second base because where the ball hit. Well, as long as it bounces back and doesn't go out of play, I think we're all right. We are back to baseball now. Roberts at first base. D'Angelo at the plate. D'Angelo 0 for 3 today, flying out to center field and right field. This one gets across for strike number one. And Caden Terry finding some confidence and rhythm here on the mound, and, and really it just comes with reps. And Caden now facing his fourth batter of the day. Excuse me, his fifth batter of the day. The 0 1 pitch on the way. Inside corner again for strike number two. And Caden Terry has worked ahead in the count here to Alex D'Angelo at no balls and two strikes. That was a big pitch by Caden. We need another one right here. No balls and two strikes. The count here to D'Angelo. Roberts is at first base. The pitch. Low and struck foul for another opportunity for D'Angelo. The count will remain no balls and two strikes. One of the things noticing by Caden Terry is he does a very good job of hiding the ball. He doesn't really show it early on in his pitch. Can make it very difficult to pick up. Alex D'Angelo, the right fielder today for the Eagles, was the game one starter. Took the loss that day. The runner's on the move. This one inside. Throw down to second base. Will not be in time. And the go-ahead run for Argyle is now at second base with one out. Alex D'Angelo has a one ball and two strikes count at the plate. Roberts at second base, D'Angelo at the plate, Sanderson giving some signals here. The pitch struck up the middle. Gonzalez is going to have to range it down, and it's going to get through and die. And fortunately here for the Pirates, as that ball gets underneath Gonzalez, is that Roberts is going to be stuck at third base. 
potentially could have been an easy score there. That's going to bring Parker Prater to the plate, and Prater has been is one for three today. They're going to call that one a hit. Here that in was the park. that was a tough that was a tough play. Josiah could have gotten to it, but it was really really the the way the ball was was bouncing. It was a tough play. Again, we just need Caden. It, it, it's 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 going to be important to see how Caden responds. He's in a little bit of a jam here. Let's see how he responds. He responds with a strike as he starts off against Parker Prater. No balls, one strike. Now the count. Runners on the corners for the Eagles. D'Angelo at first base, Roberts at third base. Would not be surprised to see D'Angelo try to take second base here. Terry peeks over at first, comes to the plate, the pitch, the throw down, and Gonzalez stops it there. D'Angelo gets to second base, but Roberts stays at third base. I guess the rule here in baseball is that unless you know for a fact that winning run can score, you do not let them go. Absolutely, that's what I that's what I do. The, you know, you knew he was going to take second, and the most important run, obviously, Captain Obvious speaking here, is that runner on third. One ball, one strike, one out here in the top of the eighth inning. Pirates and Eagles all tied up at three. This one hit over on the left side. It's going to get through. One will score. That may score two. Going to field it there. Fired in. Gets passed. And out at home plate as that would have been the second run. But Tyler Sproul getting the throw in. Roberts is going to score. D'Angelo is going to be thrown out at home plate for out number two. And Prater is going to be at second base. The Eagles have scored the go-ahead run here. In the Region 1 final, they'll take their first lead of the game now, 4-3, to three, with Connor Lillis at the plate. And Bryce LeBlanc headed to the bullpen. Terry checks back at Prater. Comes set, the pitch. Low and inside for ball number one. They've corrected the scoring on the board and that hit will be an error now. Previously by D'Angelo. Lillis gets back into the box now. One ball and no strikes the count. Terry gets the sign from Sanderson. He will come set the pitch. Hit foul over toward the third baseline for strike number one. Even up the count at one ball and one strike. There's two outs here in the top of the eighth inning. The Pirates are the home team. They'll have another chance to answer here. When they get to their portion, one ball, one strike, two outs, one on for the Eagles. And this one gets across for strike number two to move Caden Terry ahead in the count now at one ball and two strikes. The one-two pitch, a breaking pitch, a hanging curve there by Terry, fouled off, and the count will remain one ball and two strikes here with two outs. 
the Eagles scoring four runs so far today. One in the first, one in the third, one in the sixth, and one now in the eighth. The Pirates scoring all three of theirs in the first inning and have not been able to get across the plate again since then as this one is fouled out again over on the left side of the field for the count to remain one ball and two strikes. They've had opportunities, Mr. Inlow, and there have been moments that we thought maybe they could manufacture one but have not been able to do so quite yet, and they will be down to their final three outs when they come up to bat here in the bottom of the eighth. But first, that elusive third out here in the top of the eighth, Terry on the mound, one ball, two strikes to count here with two outs. The runner is taken off, and this one fouled again to the backstop. And that count will remain one ball and two strikes. You've seen Prater now take off both of the last two pitches. Terry being a lefty here. Don't be surprised if he takes off on this one as well. I believe he's leaving a little early, though. They want a balk here by Terry, but it's not even close. Count will remain one ball and two strikes here with two outs. Lillis doing a good job here, fouling off the previous three or four pitches that he's seen. The one-two pitch from Terry on the way. Runner goes, hit to Josiah, and it's over the sleeping hand of the shortstop. And Lillis with an RBI single for the Eagles to give them a two-run lead now, 5-3. to three. And, Coach, in a game of inches, that ball was just out of the reach of Josiah. Send, and, and again, Coach Mullen sending those runners every time. The, these, these Argyle Eagles are relentless on the base paths, and they're, they're doing what they have to do. You, you have to give them credit. They're, this team is, is rich in tradition, a very well-coached baseball team. We've seen, that. We've seen that the entire series, and they're doing what they have to do. It's now obviously so important how we respond. We just need to get this, get this third out, get back up to the plate. Argyle with the 5-3 lead. Sandifer at the plate for the Eagles. The runner takes off. The throw down to second base will not be in time. And the pitch will be a ball. From what I'm seeing right now, Mr. Inlow, the, the Pirate baseball team out in the field just needs to calm down and know that they will get a chance to do what they need to do now we hear Coach Chip Darden talk about this a lot, but positive body language. Keeping things positive is this one outside corner for ball two. Now two balls and no strikes the count to Hunter Sandifer. And Coach Chris Baker making his way out of the dugout. Probably just try to settle things down and maybe have that same conversations that we just mentioned about staying positive and getting out of the inning. And uh, you can't just let things un unravel here. Got to focus on the chore at hand. And it's a it's a make no mistake. It's a big moment for Caden, who hasn't you know hasn't hasn't been in, in in a lot of games. He we we saw him a lot at the beginning of the season. Uh, every time he's been in for us, he's been productive. But this is a big moment. Uh, make no mistake about it. Uh, we've said it. If we've said it once, we've said it a thousand times. These kids know what's on the line right here. And all they have to do at this point is just, just, just execute, play the game. There's, really, there's just really not a, not a lot of talking to be done at this point. Just execute, play the game. Two balls, no strikes, two outs here in the top of the eighth inning. The Eagles have played it two runs to take the 5-3 to three lead here in game three of the regional final. Caden Terry now comes set, peeks back at Lillis, the pitch, 
And this one across low for ball three to move Hunter Sandifer ahead in the count at three balls and no strikes. Would assume that Sandifer will be taking this pitch. And Prater is going to be thrown out at third base. And I'm not sure if that's a missed sign or what. But you just had Sandifer pick up a walk. And then, excuse me, Lillis is going to be thrown out trying to steal second base. Or third base, excuse me. Great job there by Connor Sanderson and Carter Warlick. The damage has been done. The Pirates down to their final three outs here in the bottom of the eighth from the Region 1 final game. They'll need at least two to keep it alive. We'll be back for it right here on 100.7 The Score and the LCISD Athletics YouTube channel. On the campus of Abilene Christian University, Crutcher Scott Field, the site for today's game as it has been the previous two. This series tied one game apiece and was tied going into the eighth inning, but the Argyle Eagles able to plate two runs to take a 5-3 lead and really take a lot of the momentum out of this stadium, Paul Inlow. Yes, they did. And again, they're, they're doing what they have to do. And, and it's now time for us to respond. The, these Pirates, again, have been here before. And the bottom of the lineup, we've got six through nine coming up. And they have been producing for us the, the entire playoffs, all of our entire playoff series. And we certainly, obviously, we need to do them right now. They need to, they need to put that ball in play, get us a few runs, tie this thing up. Josiah Gonzalez will lead things off for the Pirates and see the first offering here from Lillis called for strike number one. This one low for ball one to even up the count at one ball and one strike. In, in a situation like this, you want a guy who's been in a leadoff spot before, and that is Josiah Gonzalez, as he'll poke this one out of play on the right side of the field for strike number two. But JoJo has definitely been a, a guy that has appeared in several leadoff opportunities as he was the leadoff man early in this season and in the, later in the district play moved into the six hole, seven hole, excuse me, now the six hole, hits it to Rosquez over at second. He'll fire it to first base for out number one. And the Pirates now down to their final two outs here in the Region 1 final as Josiah Gonzalez is thrown out at first base for out number one. That's going to send Connor Sanderson to the plate. Sanderson today, 0 for 3. As he'll stand in to face Lillis for the second time today. This one inside for ball number one. And how does the old saying go, Mr. Inload, the best way to eat an elephant? One little bite at a time, Coach. And uh, that's what the Pirates are going to have to do here. And you cannot score runs unless you get guys on base by any means necessary. And Connor Sanderson takes an early 2-0 lead here in this at-bat. Two balls and no strikes. Lillis the pitch here. Low and inside for ball three. 
Connor Sanderson now ahead in the count at three balls and no strikes. One out here in the bottom of the eighth inning. And this one put on a tee for Sanderson and strike number one. Sanderson still ahead in the count at three balls and one strike. And this one popped up high out on the left side. It's going to be playable and caught. For out number two. The Pirates going to have to do it with only one out. Down to their final out of the season. Need a minimum of two runs. And Bryce LeBlanc at the plate. The Pirates scoring three runs in the first inning. As this one almost catches LeBlanc on the back leg will be ball number one. It was Argyle striking first, scoring one in the top of the first. The Pirates score three in the bottom of the first. And then Argyle pieced together runs in the third, sixth, and eighth inning to take this 5-3 lead. The Pirates unable to score again since the first inning. Will need to score two here to keep their season alive. One ball and one strike to count here to LeBlanc. Hits this one high out to center field. It's going to be high in the air. Center fielder is under it, and it's caught. And the Lubbock Cooper Pirates will fall to Argyle here in game three. Five to three will be the final as Bryce LeBlanc has flied out to center field for out number three. The Pirates' season comes to a close. They lose game three here, five to three. We'll send it back to the station and come back for our post-game wrap-up right after this on 100.7 The Score in the LCISD Athletics YouTube channel. from the Region 1 5A final to Argyle. And it is a bittersweet moment for 16 seniors and really this whole Pirate team, Mr. Inlow, as they fought and fought hard. They came out on what looked to be a very promising day, scoring three in the first to match Argyle's one. It was three to one for a while. In the third, Argyle scoring another run to make it three to two. And then in the sixth inning, Argyle scoring that elusive third run to tie things up. We went to extra innings after a scoreless seventh. Argyle scoring five or scoring two to make it five to three, and the Pirates going down order in their portion of the eighth inning. 
Well, Coach, I know the kids aren't ready to hear it yet, nor are the fans, but, but you just have to understand sometimes you can't look at what you've lost. You, 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 look, you have to look at how far you've come. And this team, by all accounts, was expected to do nothing this year. And, and they, took, they took a team that won state last year with a rich baseball tradition. Make no mistake, this Argyle team is a, is a very talented team up and down the lineup. And they took them to the mat. We had, we had the great win Friday night. And, and we took this team to, a, to this three-game series, took them to extra innings. I mean, and the sad fact is, as much as we all love sports, we all know that only one team is happy at the end of the season. Everyone else has tears. But these kids have nothing to hang their heads about. This is a great group of young men that are going to these seniors that are going to do great things. The underclassmen, they have a foundation they can build upon. This is this 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 could have been had we won this game. This would have been the first time that we've been uh, that we've won a region final a, as a as a five A school. So the, these kids and coaches have have nothing to be ashamed about, nothing to hold their heads about. Again, they're not ready to hear it today. They may not be ready to hear it tomorrow, but someday they're going to look back and they're going to see exactly what they accomplished. And, and they should all be very proud. And and I, I said it. I said it back in in Stephenville, and I, and I'm going to say it again, folks. I've known Coach Winchy for for quite a few years when he when he when he coached with Terry Baxter. And, and you know, and we, and we do have to give a shout out to Terry Baxter, who built this foundation of excellence that is Pirate Baseball. And I'll tell you, of all the great seasons that that Coach Winchy has had, for my money. This is this is without a doubt the best coaching effort I've seen. That we had a very tough district. They had a, they had a rough start, and and there's just nothing to be ashamed about with these kids. And and they'll be able to see it someday. And and, and LCP Nation, you you need to let these kids know how proud you are because they are they are really a fantastic group of young men, a fantastic group of coaches, and 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 these guys do things the right way. And we can't take anything away from the Argyle Eagles. They're a they're a fantastic baseball team, and and Pirate Nation don't hold this against me. But I'll I'll be rooting for them the rest of the way. I'll be rooting for them down down in down in Round Rock, and and make no mistake again, this is a great team. But I am just so proud of these kids, so so proud of these coaches, and 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 win or lose, these kids win and lose with class, and. And as we said down in Stephenville, we said this week, win or lose, never, ever under, underestimate the heart of a pirate. These are some great kids. One of the things that we've seen at Lovett Cooper, regardless of the sport, is the idea of reloading versus rebuilding. Coach Winchie will have several pieces coming back next season. Very premature to even begin to talk about next season. 16 seniors, and of those 16, 12 will go on to play baseball at the next level in some way, form, or fashion, which says a lot about this program and what they've built here. Obviously not the ending that they would have hoped for or wanted. They've played three games series over the last several weeks and made it all the way to game three. They've been fortunate enough to win set those the last two game threes, and they ran into a very good Argyle team today. When you look at the scoreboard, I think you'll notice that Achilles heel for this Pirate team in that error column, and when they've won that column, they've usually lost the game, and that's to be said for anybody. Not to take anything away from what the Pirates did, as you saw the effort of Cohen Peepcorn there in the seventh inning laying out on an infield single and, and being safe in what most would have considered a dead-to-rights out. But he was able to get there. You saw a very gutsy pitching performance from Tyler Spruill and a very good relief effort by Caden Terry. Uh, it, you know, and, and as Chris Level says, sports, just there's just some days that it's not meant to be. And unfortunately for the Pirates, as it pains me to say it, today was not that day. These kids, you know, baseball, Coach, baseball is a, is a beautiful and cruel sport. And... And again, these kids today, they don't know it, but they have learned some lessons in this series that will serve them well in life. And, 
And all of you LCP fans, everyone in LCP Nation, we have a great group of kids. Not only baseball players, not only athletes, but, but all, of our, all of our UIL you know, academics, everything they do. We, we excel at everything. And, and, and even the kids that, that aren't on any of these teams, they're just, they're just great kids. And, and they need to know, they need to know from us that, that we appreciate that they're doing the right thing when they don't have to. Uh, again, and I'll close by saying I, I am just so proud of these kids. Heart breaks for them, but, but these kids are going to be fine, and, and this is going to serve them well down the road. And, 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 folks, these kids and coaches deserve a huge round of applause. Our athletic director, Coach Catwinkle, we have been going back and forth between Abilene, Abilene and, and Lubbock, sometimes floating back and forth with Coach Sexton. And, and the heart and soul that our athletic department puts into all of these great kids, and there's only one reason any of us are here, it's for the kids. And, and again, they give us, they always give us their best. And at least what they at least deserve from us is our best. Support these kids. It's, it's, it's tough being a teenager these days, but these kids are going to learn some lessons on this field. Again, they, they won't know it today, maybe not tomorrow, but these are going to serve them well in, in life. And, and, and this is just one fantastic group of Lubbock Cooper Pirates. A lot of emotions out there as hugs are exchanged between teammates and dads and sons and granddads and sons and moms and sons and all of the pieces that make up this pirate team as you mentioned uh, a very good season a successful season if not making it farther than they've ever been in 5a certainly tying it this season Um, and it was one of those years where if you had looked back in february at the record for this team you would not have placed them in the regional final but it was grit determination hard work Hard work in practice, hard work in outside of practice, and just could not be more proud of these guys. Um, very thankful for these 16 seniors. Very thankful for Coach Brad Winchie, Austin Taylor, Chris Baker, A.J. Perez, Mr. Jacob Hinojosa, Winchie, Taylor, Hinojosa, Perez, all four current coaches, former Pirate baseball players, which says a lot about this program as well. And uh, Four great coaches, four great educators, four great men. Don't want to forget Miss Winchie, Miss Taylor, Miss Baker, and the significant others who put their guys uh, on loan for four months out of the year. Very appreciative to them. And this is kind of a, a last salute for you, Mr. Enlow, is uh, your last duties as a, as a pirate. I'm sure part of you will always be a pirate. You'll be a longtime pirate fan. You're going to make the move down the street and be a Liberty Patriot. Brother, I have made that decision, but it's, you know, I'm not going from something. I'm going to something, and it's, it's just like your kids when you have another one. You don't, you don't love the older one less. You love them both the same. I'll always be a pirate. You guys aren't get, going to get rid of me that easily, and and I've I've been. It's it's just been a pleasure to be a pirate, and and I you know I make no mistake. I'm looking forward to being a patriot. It's it's a it's a lifetime opportunity for me. It's it's basically I don't mind saying I'm going to my dream job, and and I know great things are on the horizon for for Liberty High School, but. You can bet I'm going to be on the football field with McKay Man back here. He's got he's got a couple of seasons left. You guys aren't going to get rid of me that easy. I'm I'm going to be hanging around. We and you know it. Some people trivialize it, say it's trite, but we always talk about LCP family, and and nothing is bigger than the brand. And we are indeed a family. I don't care if we have one high school or a thousand. We are LCP family, and that's never going to change. Frustrating day for the Pirates, a very bittersweet moment as they make it to the regional final and fall in three games to Argyle. Argyle will go on to the state tournament. Could not be more proud of this team. You and I have to hustle back to Lubbock because there is a football game tonight as well. At least I'm for sure going to get there. Coach Chip Darden and the Lubbock Cooper Pirate football coaching staff will be leading the red team in the ASCO All-Star game at 7 o'clock kickoff tonight from Pirate Stadium. That will be a fun time. 
and uh, want to make sure we get there for that and wish those guys good luck. Chip Darden and staff, as well as several Pirates playing in that game, Noah Williams, Braden Finter, uh, and one of my favorite all-time Pirates, Ty Polite. So, I would imagine you are a little bit fond of him. Coach, I do appreciate you, all your help carrying me along. It has been a pleasure. We are LCP family. Well said. For Keenan Catwinkle on the LCISD Athletics YouTube channel, Brennan Riker back at the station on 100.7 The Score, Paul Inlow, I'm Coach Poe, signing off for the final time this baseball season as the Pirates fall in the regional final, 5-3 to three to Argyle. And you've been listening to it on 100.7 The Score and the LCISD Athletics YouTube channel. Good afternoon. Good luck. God